Hi everyone, welcome to our quick video lecture about types of variables and types of research claims. Let's get started. I'm hopeful that some of this is review from research methods, but I don't know how long ago research methods was for you or how well you understood it then. So it's important to review this even if it seems like you've heard it before. When it comes to variables, there are different types. Remember that a variable just means to vary, to change. So it's something that we're interested in looking at more that has a potential to change, as opposed to a constant, which of course remains the same. Now in the methods review PowerPoint that went with the methods test, there's a really good slide that talks about the difference between operational definitions and conceptual definitions of variables. And I really encourage you to go back and review that because operational definitions definitely come up as we move along in the semester. But for now, let's just focus on variables. So when we think about a variable, there are two main types. There are ones that we only measure and ones that we manipulate. The ones that we manipulate are the ones that as a researcher, we actually do something to directly. Sometimes I hear the phrase, well, I picked which ones I wanted to examine. So that's manipulation, right? No. Manipulation means that you, the researcher, are actually changing something. Whereas measured variables are just things that we measure. We don't actually try to influence them or change them or give one group one version and one group another. We're literally just measuring. Oftentimes in psychology, we measure them with some kind of survey method. But remember, you can measure variables lots of ways. You can take people's blood pressure or swap their mouth for cortisol levels or track their eye movements. So there's lots of ways we can measure things. But when I just measure a variable, it's a measured variable, I actually have to do something for it to be manipulated. When we think about types of research, there's two major camps, quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative research is when we are interested in the whys or when we're interested in describing a phenomenon for the first time. In these cases, we usually take a small number of people, but we get a lot of in-depth measurement so that we know a lot about that group of people or that phenomenon. And we know about that phenomenon in depth, but we only know about a narrow number of cases. Quantitative, on the other hand, is usually about a wide range of cases, but the questions we ask tend to be much more shallow. So there are questions like, what, when, is this one thing effective, how many, stuff like that. So again, we ask a much more shallow question or we get shallower measurement, but it's over a wide number of cases, perhaps because we're looking for a pattern now that we understand the phenomenon that we learned about in qualitative methods. This is important because as we go through the semester, I might ask you to critique research. And students often say things like, oh, well, there's only 20 people in the sample, so it must be a poor sample. Well, no, 20 people is actually a really large sample for qualitative. Um, so just the number of people in a sample doesn't tell you whether or not it's a biased sample or a good sample. The type of research method will tell us better about how many people should be in a sample or not. We don't talk a lot about qualitative methods in this class or in our department. This is not because qualitative methods is poor or not good. In fact, a lot of my training and research is in qualitative methods because my background is as a counselor and counselor educator, and qualitative methods is a primary methodology that we use in that field. If you think about quantitative methods, you can usually divide up the questions that we ask or the types of claims we're trying to establish into three main categories, frequency, association, and causal. In a frequency claim, we're literally trying to understand what is the frequency of something. So how much or how often? In a frequency claim, there is one and only one variable. And that variable is only measured. So if I were to say something like the percentage of students who bought the textbook, that would be a frequency claim because I only measured how many students bought the textbook. There's only one variable here and I'm kind of describing how much. What is the frequency of students who bought the textbook? That's a frequency claim. A lot of times frequency claims are about descriptive statistics. 
Association claims, you can think of this as a relationship because there are two variables here, but each of the variables are also only measured. Because they are only measured, we're looking to see is there a relationship between them. So a lot of times with this, we're using correlations where we're looking to see if one variable goes up, what happens to the other one? Does it also go up or does it go down? or is there no relationship here at all? Causal claims are the third one, and this is what our class focuses most on because causal claims are usually experiments where we're trying to show cause and effect. Now in a cause and effect relationship, we have to have at least one variable that is manipulated and at least one variable that is only measured. The real key here is that a variable is manipulated. And again, we're trying to establish a cause and effect relationship. If you read a description and there's only one variable and that variable is measured, we know it's a frequency claim. If there's two variables, we know it can't be a frequency claim. It's either an association claim or a causal claim. If the two variables are only measured, it's clearly an association claim. And if one of those variables is manipulated, then it may be a causal claim. The reason why I say maybe is because causal claims are hard to establish and there's some other things that we have to show. So again, this class is experimental. And while we are going to talk about some of the other types of claims, frequency and association claims, and next module is actually going to be on correlations to remind you about correlative methods, the majority of this class focuses on experimental methods. So it's important to understand how experiments are different than the other types of methodologies. Again, when we're trying to establish causal claims, we have to do something different than all the other types of quantitative claims. We have to directly manipulate an IV. A true experiment has to have direct manipulation of at least one of the variables, and we also have to control for some of the other variables that are in the world so that we have a higher internal validity. When we think about establishing a cause and effect relationship, we have to show three things. The first one is that we have to show that the variables co-vary. What we mean by this is that they are in a relationship with each other and as one changes, the other one changes. That first part is basically an association claim. So a cause and effect relationship is a special kind of relationship. And if they're not related at all, they can't have a special relationship. Just like you can't have a special relationship with someone you've never met before, but that not all friendships are intimate partners. Just because you have a relationship with someone doesn't mean it's the special kind of relationship. So the first step is to show that the variables are related to each other, that they co-vary. The other two components are temporal precedence and internal validity. Those are the two parts that correlations don't have. A correlation only shows part one, that they co-vary. They're in a relationship with each other. But a cause and effect relationship also requires, for temporal precedence, that you know which one came first. The cause, of course, has to come first. In an association claim, you're just measuring both. And so because you're just measuring both, you don't know which one came first. But in a cause and effect relationship, you're manipulating one of the variables. And so you know that that's the one that came first. The third thing is internal validity. And what this means is that you have tried to control for all of the other variables in the situation so that you know that when you just tweak this one over here, if this one changes, it's because you tweaked that one thing over there. If you haven't done good methods of control, you don't know which variable is actually explaining why this one moved. That's the hardest part about cause and effect relationships or establishing causation. Some students read this that you have to have a control group. A control group is just one type of control. There's lots of ways that we control for extraneous and confounding variables. A control group is one of those, but just because an experiment doesn't have a control group doesn't mean that it has no types of control. Pre and post tests often don't have a control group but that's because you're comparing everyone to themselves. So you don't need a control group, but there's still plenty of methods of controlling for other variables. One of the other types of variables that we need to make sure we mention is quasi IVs or quasi variables. Quasi independent variables are variables where we can't actually manipulate them, but 
we think that they are in fact the predictor variable, that they are the cause for the effect. In psychology, a lot of variables end up being quasi-IVs because these are participant factors. Things about you that I can't change. I can't change your age or your race or your ethnicity or your sexual identity or your gender identity or your sexual orientation. I can't change or manipulate whether or not your parents stayed together or got divorced or what area of the country you were raised in or what languages you speak. All of those can be predictor variables, but you didn't actually manipulate them. So because of that, they're called quasi-IVs. And then your experiment becomes a quasi-experimental method. Now that doesn't mean that it's bad, but it's not a true experiment either. When it comes to your projects in this class, they have to be true experiments. They can't be quasi-experiments. This is because you're demonstrating to me, the instructor, that you know the difference. So again, if your IV is not something you can manipulate, then it's not your IV. It's a quasi-IV. I hope that brief video helped clarify the types of research claims and the types of variables that we'll be talking about in this class. We are going to spend some time talking about association claims, and you are going to read stuff that is about frequency claims. But most of our focus will be on causal claims. We also have to talk about how do you test for and support the hypotheses that you develop for these types of claims. And that will be in one of our next lectures. All right, hope this helps. And if you have any questions, remember to post to the FAQ board and I'll see you online.